This is English VoiceOver in Asia, Episode 2. I'm your host, Yui Haruhara, and today's guest is our first from Japan, Eric Kelso. You may know him as the voice of Captain Falcon in F-Zero GX, not Smash Brothers, that would be Ryo Horikawa, who is also the Japanese voice of Vegeta. You may have heard Eric on Japan's public broadcasting station NHK as well, such as the children's program Ego de Asobo with Orton, as the titular whale Orton. I don't have a big story about getting in touch with Eric like I did getting in touch with Christian Lee. I emailed the address found on Eric's website and he said yes. Pretty simple. <laughs> and this ended up being the Murphy's Law interview. Everything that could have gone wrong, did go wrong. Problem number one for this was our Zoom meeting didn't work. We needed to reschedule, that's fine, but apparently Zoom was stubborn with updating the time. So once we got it to work, we hit problem number two, connection issues. For some reason, our connections were lagging noticeably horribly. I get it, we're on different ends of the globe, but this was worse than normal. We switched over to Google Meet to try there. It was marginally better. The good news is that Google Meet allows users to turn on transcription, so I was able to keep up using that, thankfully. Now here's problem number three. I forgot to record my mic for the first 12 minutes. You're going to hear my re-recorded lines for that time frame. You'll also hear me pop in and summarize what Eric said in portions of Poor Connection. Without further delay, here's my interview with Eric Kelso. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Eric Kelso, and I'm in Tokyo. I've been here about 35 years. I'm a voice actor and narrator, originally from California. What got you into acting? Um, in a nutshell, I was studying film at UC Santa Barbara. And so I thought uh, it'd be more interesting to make documentaries about different cultures and things. After Eric graduated from university, he hopped on a plane to Tokyo. He planned to stay a while as there were plenty of opportunities for English speakers to teach English. So he did that for two years. He also planned to visit other countries in Asia, but at the time, Japan was in a bubble economy. Now it's much cheaper. So it wasn't financially viable to travel. In addition to teaching English lessons in a classroom, he also taught English on TV and radio for NHK. In fact, he still does a lot of work for NHK, as we'll see later. Second two year, two years, <clears throat> I uh, started doing more voice work. I started doing more like um, educational recordings and promotion video recordings and TV commercials and, and voices uh, in the late 90s, I guess. This all just kind of happened for Eric. He didn't really plan on it. He found himself with a great newfound career, he had a girlfriend, he had all these friends over in Japan, and, well, he's been there now for over three decades. What got you into acting? <clears throat> um, that's another story, yeah. I, uh, I was at a local bar where I was living in Yotsuya, in kind of the center of Tokyo at the time. I was just a teacher and, and doing some, no, not doing any voice work yet. This is the first job. A guy I know, um, <clears throat> He was a voice actor. He'd been in Japan forever. And so he came in. He sat down and we were having a drink and just chatting. And he went to the pay phone, no cell phones or anything at that time. So he went to my wife, who was his manager, just to check on things. And she said, well, you know, you just got a call about a, doing a TV commercial on Tuesday. But you have an educational recording on Tuesday. So, you know, you can't do it. You know, and TV commercials pay a hundred times better than an educational recording. So I said, I have an idea. So he came back to the to the inside to the to the uh, counter. Can you do me a favor? And I say, Yeah, sure. What is it? And he said, Can you do a voice job for me on Tuesday? And so I said, I don't know. Can I? I mean, I've never done that. What does it entail? And he said, It's easy. He said, You you, you know, you're a smart guy. You know, it's like apple, banana, carrot. Kind of. It's, it's like for little kids. You know, it's like hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Kind of thing. And so he says, it's two hours. It's an easy gig. And it was paying like a lot better than my teaching was. And so <clears throat> I said, yeah, I'd like to try. And so I did it. And so he, they, the client was happy. The studio was happy. He was happy. And I helped him out of a, 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 out of a, a tough time. So he said, I'll just give you that contract. So that was every month for two hours. And the studio liked me enough to start kind of offering me other gigs as well. And then I'm like, well, gosh, you know, people do this like for a living. And I'm like, yeah, there were agents and I could make a demo 
At the time, doing this online was nigh impossible, so he had to do it either through an agent or by himself. My teaching, I started cutting the teaching like I first cut the high school. And so I was able just to kind of, you know, to kind of, you know, s smoothly go into it. Working freelance, he needed to keep his schedule open so he could take on other jobs. What other positions slash jobs do you hold, like writer, translator, etc.? Um, I'm just teaching like a couple of classes a week now. I like to keep my hand in that. I, I do writing for some TV shows and things like that. I'm, a, I'm doing a children's show right now. The TV show is Ego de Asobo with Orton, as mentioned earlier. So I help out with that and do the, and do the voices for that as well. I just, I'm finishing up a screenplay I've been working on for many years right now, like a full length Hollywood kind of uh, feature film that I'm going to be shopping around uh, in the coming months, hopefully. You know, knock, knock, on, knock on wood, that'll pay off to, you know, pan out to something. At least, at least have somebody read it and say it's good. You know, even if I don't sell it, at least, you know, get some recognition, I guess. But um, <clears throat> I've done some directing of some projects as well, especially for some medical things. And so kind of a little bit of a lot of things. You're a busybody. What do you do in your free time? <clears throat> um, go to the gym. Um, I do a lot of cooking. I, I really like cooking. I've been pretty much living alone for most of almost all of my life. So I learned how to cook at a young age. And it's, uh, it's just such a, a wonderfully creative, you know, hobby. And it's also, um, I think, a great art form because it works on all five senses. And it's very, there's something very zen about it that, you know, it's, it's the most beautiful thing you ever want to touch and smell. And a couple, hour, a couple hours later, it's, it's literally shit, you know, <laughs> the most disgusting thing in the world. And, and you did that yourself. <laughs> So th there's something kind of interesting philosophically about food and cooking, I think, as well. You said you needed to start our interview early because you're cooking for your fiance. What are you cooking? <clears throat> uh, earlier today, I, oh no, I'm sorry, yesterday, I made some cornbread, put that in the freezer. It's just going to be in a few days. She's never had cornbread before. <clears throat> and uh, um, I'm going to make some, we're going to make some nice uh, grilled chicken quesadillas and I'm doing some grilled tofu and um, uh, namaharamaki, which is the, is the, the raw Thai spring rolls, you know, the, and um, we're going to do, she likes shrimp a lot. So we're going to do a, a shrimp cocktail and uh, lots of wine and make some martinis and yeah, it's fun. Before we get into the work questions, I have to ask, what are you recording in that picture you have on Gmail and your website? That was at the Sega Studios, but I was either doing Paul Phoenix and Tekken, or that was Jackie Bryant in Virtua Fighter. Okay. I guess. Yeah, both very wonderful yeah. voices, both very energetic characters, so. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, they had a lot of energy. One was just a studio shot that I set up. Okay. Went for an old film noir. Yeah, I was like, it was like you're really into whatever you were doing. I was just wondering what you were recording. Um, what is it like doing voiceover work in Japan as an English speaker? Well, you're limited to things that they want to hear in English. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a bit more limited as far as availability. Are sometimes very good, and sometimes not. Okay. Uh, if they know what they want and they are good at communicating, then it really helps the, the voice actor, the narrator. Yeah. Because we, we have to know a direction, you know, you know, or they say, do it again. You're like, it's going to be the same as the last time I did it. <laughs> if you can't tell me how to change it, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and they're not always good at that. Oh gosh. Um, there's not a lot of pre-production in Japan. A lot of times they kind of do it on the fly. Really? So they're like, Hmm, well, let's see, what do I want? And sometimes it's, it's kind of funny, the, the direction, I guess, maybe culturally it's different or something's lost in translation, like literally like the movie Lost in Translation. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you remember a scene in that where he's doing the, he has the glass of whiskey and, and he's doing the Suntory whiskey yeah. thing. And um, he's wearing a tuxedo in the studio, like this, like this. And he's like, what? <laughs> and and it's kind of like that sometimes. I oh really my gosh. Relate to that because sometimes they're like, we want you to be, 
really high energy and, and really angry, but you're shy <laughs> or something like that. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> you know, you're shy, so you're really quiet, but you're really high energy and, and angry. I'm like, oh, well, you can't really do that. You know? yeah. <clears throat> or they'll say something like part of the character background is he really likes chocolate. <laughs> or something like that i'm like i don't know how to do that with a voice yeah it's like it's like um, playing uh charades or something yeah Gig. so a lot of times it's a cultural thing or just it's you know the personality of the individual y yeah you well you have to know what you have to know what you're doing and also you have to play to a japanese audience right you know when you're doing a lot of things that are going to go internationally you play it to more of an international audience who are native speakers when you play to a japanese audience you have to do it more slowly and more clearly and something that they're going to be able to get. Like a lot of educational stuff sounds really stilted. Yeah. You know, instead of saying, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks. You have to, how are you? You have to kind of do it as a, as a, a language learning exercise or at least something that they could hear and kind of catch. You have to be able to walk that line, but also know when to walk which part of the line. Because what happens to a lot of narrators in Japan is you kind of get stuck in that remedial English education yeah. sound. <laughs> and so when they ask us, sometimes they ask video games and stuff, and they want that clear sound, it sounds a bit awkward. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it totally makes sense. You got to know you... your audience. Basically, the old adage, you have to know your audience. Yeah. Okay, so that's some of the, the challenges that go behind that. So it's, a, it's what you're saying is it's very niche, as, I, as I've kind of expected. You know, it's not the main language, but uh, you're also limited as to tones of voice. Like, a lot of, I know a lot of what you do is educational, like Orton the Whale, you, you've done that recently. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that's, you know, talk real slow for children. But then you also did, like, video games back in the 2000s. You, like we were saying, Jackie and... <clears throat> Uh, you did Captain Falcon and all that, where that's something you're going to be in a more natural speaking tone. Right, right. Okay. And that's what you, that's what, where is this going? Who's going to be watching? This? Exactly. Is a really important question to ask. So it's not like there's no work. Much less than before, it's spread out more. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. 20 years ago, there were half as many people doing the work. Yeah. And so now there is half as much work. And it's, <laughs> yeah, it's worth yeah, it's a supply and demand. So a lot of people kind of figured out that it's kind of a fun gig. Yeah. We were trying to keep that a secret. <laughs> but somehow the word got out. And uh, so a lot more people are doing it now. So that's, that's work to go around. What is the casting or audition process like in Japan as far as doing these gigs? Well, you make a demo of like narration voices and also of character voices. And then you find agents and you put together a profile and you send them to the agents. Okay. And then the different companies who want to use voice actors and narrators contact those agents <clears throat> and they ask for a list of the people and they give them your voice sample huh. and the client listens to your voice sample. And from those dozens of voice samples they listen to, okay. hopefully you're the one. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because I, I I know you're not doing as many like character voices, but I was I was just curious how it was in Japan versus how it is say in America or people I'm interviewing uh, in other Asian countries in Hong Kong and Singapore. A lot of the times they'll just know you already and say, "Here, do a dad voice. Here, do a mm -hmm. kid voice." Mm -hmm. Like that's mm -hmm. how it is in Hong Kong from people I've talked to there. In Japan, they like to go through agents. Okay, you know, there's a there's a very kind of a rigid format to Japanese culture where they like everybody to do, you know, do their part. Okay. And, uh, you know, agents, you know, <clears throat> like, um, Shenmue, I think Yu Suzuki, I had, I had done some work with him and he, and I was doing like virtual fighter and stuff. So yeah. I think he had any parts and asked for me. Okay. Um, so sometimes you do have directors. Yeah. Work with before. So definitely I've been called back to do jobs again that I did. Right. First time jobs, you're just cattle call, you know. Okay. Luckily, you don't have to go to audition. They, they sound file. Okay. So that's much easier than actually acting. 
I think with, <laughs> with actual like stage acting or film or TV acting, you have to go there and sit there and suffer the people in the room. And yeah. that's just so demeaning and, and, and <laughs> discouraging when you don't get it, you know? Yeah. You, 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 know, you waste half a day and you have nothing to show for it. I would actually like to have the opportunity to do the voice in front of them because they can say, no, a little more this way or a little more that way. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I'm feel like I'm kind of good on the fly with kind of just okay. figuring out a character. Yeah. Um, and sometimes maybe that character isn't in your demo reel, you know, right. so they, then they don't know you can do it. Yeah. And so that's one downside. And, and it's a lot more fun. I was like, yeah, like the bad guys or the tough guys or the heroes or something. But then for my, like, like you were mentioning before, my, my children's show, which is kind of like Sesame Street. <laughs> I'm the main character. I'm like the big, big bird kind of character. Hi, I'm Orton. <laughs> right, because I thought it would be a good voice like this. Yeah. They like this voice for that character. Hopefully, they'll give you a chance to show what you can do. Yeah. And then if they like it, it's, it's nice not to be, like you said, to be pigeonholed into, into certain things. So when you're doing animation like Orton or you're in the recent uh, that Ultraman crossover or you're in mm -hmm. Sakura Quest uh, recently for a one-off character, um, are you with other people there or is it just you? Um, well, the tech people and the director and the client and things like that. In the recording booth, if Eric is just recording his own lines, then it's him alone. If there is more than one character involved, then sometimes other actors in the scene are involved too. Otherwise, they'll be edited in to sound like all the cast is together. It depends on the project and the scheduling of everyone involved. It's not too different from how America records anime dubs. Everyone works their own schedule, and once in a blue moon, actors will be together recording. pre cartoons in America have actors together more often. And what is it like doing work right now with the pandemic going on? It was slow. It's picking up a bit. That's good. Uh, for the last two years. So I actually built a home studio. Oh, great. And so I've been using that. So that helps. Yeah, it was low. They just were not doing it. And even if they did it, you know, it was all like, you know, ultra sterilized. You couldn't record with other right. weight between people. And they, you know, wiped down everything. If you are working with somebody, there's all these like plexiglass dividers between right. you. And, Oh my gosh, yeah. Which is good. You know, I'd rather have them do that than just say, ah, oh, screw it, do it. Yeah, you yeah, you'll be, oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, so that's okay. It's, I mean, Japan really was on top of things in that way. Not their vaccines. They were very late to get their vaccines. Yeah. But at this point, I think 90% of elderly or 95% of elderly oh, that's are vaccinated. Oh, that's good. That's good. Like 75 or 80% like 80 of other people are vaccinated now. That's wonderful. You know, Japanese are, are really good about uh, communal things and see that it's kind of your social responsibility to get a vaccination. People, <laughs> people do that. But back to your career, um, what is your favorite project you've worked on or projects? <laughs> Eric said his favorite kind of project is games. He specifically mentioned Shenmue, a video game on the Sega Dreamcast in 1999. You know, um, I was luckily... Uh, I, I was able to do three very different characters and I, I really loved all three of them. And there was a lot of lines and a lot of actual acting, you know, sometimes yeah. it's just exertion sounds. It's just like, uh, uh, you know? <laughs> and uh, that's it. In these games, I actually was able to kind of get into the characters a bit and I, I felt like an actor. So that was really enjoyable for me. And then also just to see, the amazing camaraderie and community that the the fans of the San Shenmue series. Ah, oh, yeah, man. They because of them that game was brought back after fifteen years. Yeah, because they they actually broke Kickstarter on the first. Yeah, day. I remember that. Time Magazine they broke Kickstarter. Yeah, you know? and it was just insane. And even afterwards, I've I've met you know many of them have come to do kind of a sojourn to Japan, um, to the locations in the story, you know, going yeah. to Kosta or, or somewhere. Yeah. And um, I've met you know, probably a dozen of them <laughs> and they've become good friends of mine. That's you know, wonderful. Eating and drinking and they keep in touch. And uh, 
when I wasn't used in the Shenmue 3, they were like all up in arms about it and yeah. protesting. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, but thank you so much. Yeah, like some fans asked you to help out with that, getting, getting you in via a mod? Yeah, yeah. Um, Shenmue Dojo and Patty and, and James and all those guys were just so amazing. And um, they asked me, they would send me the lines <laughs> and uh, the scenes. And um, I, I did the whole game basically just from my home studio here that's amazing and sent it to them and everybody did it for free nobody made a penny on it and uh just for the sheer love of it that's and then incredible. there was a couple of with um Fu that was all ren i did and then for fukusan and guizan they had the telephone conversations with Rio, and so i uh, did those as well and, you know, the people who did the parts on the Shenmue 3 were great. But, you know, you get a certain sound in your head when you're a kid growing up playing exactly. games. <clears throat> and, you know, you don't want to hear somebody else do Bart Simpson or something. You you just get that sound in your head. And so they wanted that to hear that sound again, I think. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I don't play video games, but I've watched other people play and I've seen a lot of video of, you know, scenes and things. Um, and it, it's just amazing. Okay, what's the what's your least favorite slash most challenging projects you've worked on? Eric's least favorite projects are where he needs to talk very slowly and not be choppy. And when you need to do it for hours at a time, you just lose your mind. Or just, you know, I've, I've had to do dictionaries before where it's just like aardvark, apple. How many <laughs> more of these do we have? 4,000, okay. <sighs> you know, <laughs> so things that are repetitious mm. or um, or just kind of unnatural to kind of wear on you. But yeah. And also I've had to do a lot of like for promotion videos for like oh. a new medical product or a new um, new medical technique. These words that are about that long. And I remember one time I had a really big, long one and they said they wanted it in British pronunciation. So I had to go and look up about 50 different long medical words and 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 oh my gosh put all my marks on them and everything to how to do them in british i didn't even know them in english but and so uh and then i get there and i'm saying it and they said no we want this pronunciation i said but you said you wanted british they said no we changed we want american now <laughs> so I go, after like five hours of prepping you know i had to completely relearn it so oh you know things gosh. like that but you know, it's like any job, you know, you, you get thrown mm. curves sometimes. Yep. At the end of the day, work is work. So you go beyond anime, video games and educational work. I saw you I saw you had like an app about teaching English and you wrote a book. Um, do you mind telling us about uh, a bit of yourself about outside the realm of uh, acting? <clears throat> um, I had an app for a while called The English Game that I do with Keith Schellen, an uh, old teaching buddy of mine from 30 years ago. It was interesting. It was I, th I thought it was a good concept, but we had a hard time selling it and just getting mm. promotion and things. And then we both got busy. And then it turned out we had to we had to redo it because, you know, you have to constantly upgrade to the next operating system. Oh. So we just kind of let it die, which was very sad. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> I wrote a book about three years hey, about three years ago, and uh, it's called The English Game. Um, no, that was, that was, I'm sorry, that's the app. It was called Ericisms. One second, I think I got one. <clears throat> um, Ericisms. Okay. The book's page spread has pictures on one side and has, as he said, Eric's thoughts on life that spill out of his mouth from time to time listed on the other page. Ericisms features thoughts dating back to 15 years ago, usually when Eric went drinking. As he jokingly said, one gets very wise when drinking. He'd be with somebody and say some goofy observation, usually one or two sentences long. His friends began to call them Ericisms, hence his book title. He wrote them down on napkins or paper or at a later point began recording them on his smartphone. Ericisms originate in English, but in his publication, they're also listed in Japanese. English speakers and Japanese speakers um, can both enjoy it. And you yeah. can see the translation and it's kind of good for studying. So um, the first section I called sun, which is kind of the happy, funny ones. Second section is called wind. Looks different takes points of view on things because it's shifting. 
And then the last one is called rain because it's darker and talking about death and pain and, oh. and things, but, but things we need to talk about sometimes because we need rain to make things grow as well. Yes. So that's my little philosophical bit. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's got nice pictures of, you know, different places in California where I grew up. Okay. That's, uh, that's Big Sur right there. And it's got, you know, Santa Cruz and, and Santa Barbara and, and Yosemite and places I spent my time. Hmm. And it's fun. It's like nine bucks. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like 900 yen. I think it's like seven bucks in the States. Okay. And you can buy it on Amazon. Yes. Yeah, I saw it on uh, Amazon. Mm -hmm. I was kind of just, you know, I was doing some digging on you. So I don't like ask something that's like, oh, you should know that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering a little bit about your book. So it's, yeah, kind of yeah, just it's, your it's, it's, random it's thoughts. Fun. It's nothing too heavy or too serious. A lot of it's kind of just humorous. Yeah. It's good toilet read, you know, because you can just, pick it up and put it down whenever you want. It's a good stocking <laughs> stuffer kind of thing. So. Here's something I haven't really seen brought up in interviews. So to kind yeah. of brief you on me, where I yeah. really took off as a YouTuber was Doraemon. Yeah, Doraemon. Yeah. And um, when I was researching my video about him, I found Doraemon's English world and you were, you were Doraemon in that. You Doraemon in all the other male characters. Except Suneo and Nobita. Yeah, <laughs> I, did, I did Doraemon and Jayon. Yeah, Jayan and uh, no Nobita's father, and I did Nobita's father as well. Okay. Yeah, and, and then you were Nobita everybody. Was, uh, and the other character. Yeah, that was, was um, Rumiko. Rumiko. Yeah. And Jerry, no, Terry. Terry, yeah. yeah. So Doraemon's obviously huge over there. Um, yeah. <laughs> what did you know about him going into this project? Nothing. I only knew. Uh, what I had seen on Japanese TV a bit and, you know, on posters or on children's yeah. clothing okay. or, you know, it's, it's ubiquitous still to this day. Yeah. So I knew that he was a little cartoon character. I didn't know actually that he was a, a robot cat from the future. <laughs> <clears throat> I had from the 22nd century. I had to learn that. Eric said that he doesn't watch much Japanese TV, so he didn't know much about Doraemon's voice or mannerisms. And so I had to actually rent a video, a v VHS videotape at the time <laughs> and uh, watch some episodes, just get a feeling for him. Okay. And then, uh, you know, he's, he seemed like a <clears throat> like pretty cool character. Yeah. You know, he's always up, kind of tough, you know, not afraid of anything. Yeah. And, uh, Except mice. And like, you know, he, he's a gaijin on Earth and I'm a gaijin in Japan. <laughs> So you relate on that front. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I loved his, his um, imagination, like the anywhere door, you know? Yeah. Like the the amount of imagination door. over anywhere the course. Door! Yeah. The yeah. amount of imagination that goes in the course of 50 years of that character is astounding. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's very Japanese. <clears throat> it's almost like sezai -san plus imagination. Because um, are you aware of sezai -san Yes, well? very much so. <laughs> It's it's very much just a family and a housewife and yeah. nothing really much happens. Yeah, like um, uh, Mariko chan that's, that's another one. <laughs> yeah, and it, that's very much Japanese culture. Japanese love the every man um, or the every woman. And right. they, they like futsu. You know, futsu means just regular, normal, average. Mm. You know, and the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. So... You don't want to stick out or stand out too much because it's a bit ostentatious or it seems a bit demanding or selfish or arrogant. Right. <clears throat> you got to play to the best for the community and, and humility and to be humble and, <clears throat> you know, and modest is very important in Japan. So uh, their sense of animation, although you will see this whoosh, animation, crazy shit happen sometimes. You also see a lot of real homespun, stories yeah um where sometimes i hear them and i'm like but where's the joke you know <laughs> i want the kabumpum you know and japanese doesn't always have that yeah um and and you'll even see their singers and stuff like that you know have these idol talent you know yeah and and they're these cute little tiny girls pigtails and like a high school uniform dancing around all cute singing you know, they, they're terrible singers, <laughs> but, but they're cute and they're innocent and that they are not good singers 
is part of the appeal to Japanese. Yeah. Because if they're good singers, that would almost seem a bit arrogant. You know, that they're, <laughs> they're kind of, it's kind of like wabi-sabi in a way. <laughs> that, that they're not perfect. That, that, that we can relate to them more. As, as, as regular people, we can relate to them because they're not that good. They're just regular people too. And I think a lot of the animation has that component as well. Okay, yeah. So that, that's your kind of thoughts on it. <laughs> My take on it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a very in, that's a very interesting take because I noticed that that what's really popular in Japan, you guys, your Sazai San, Chibi Maruko Chan, Doraemon, uh, things like that. Whereas here, it's um, very much different. <laughs> yeah, you'd have Mar- Marvel or DC or something. Exactly. Like heroes. So you said you you had never heard Doraemon. You watched videotapes of him, <clears throat> just so I can get a kind of an understanding of his voice and his character. Um, I did it with my own take on it but um i just yeah i hadn't I, I didn't really watch japanese tv so i had never really seen it that's what i was wondering it's like where was the inspiration for your take on the character versus uh nobuyo oyama or uh whoever's voicing him now yeah just i just kind of had his care i saw his character i saw the range of my voice what i felt comfortable with what i thought what kind of communicated was very energetic very positive um but also a bit cocky because he's not because he's kind of fearless, a little bit of a scamp as, as well. <laughs> okay, as it were, you know, you know, I, he he has emotions, and sometimes he'll be crying or something. He's also I thought of him just he's an alien. He's a little foreigner in this strange land, so he's <laughs> kind of confused and doesn't really know what's going on sometimes. So on your website, it previously said you did the Gakuen English or the Gakken English dub. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I've ever seen you in for him is Doraemon's English World. Did you do other projects with him? That's the only thing I did with uh, Doraemon. Okay, it was just Do- English series. World. I know we recorded that you know several times in the studio, just me and Rumiko and Terry, and we all okay. split the part between us. We had a blast doing it. It was a yeah. lot of fun, and, and I, I like working with those two. two <laughs> they seem they seem wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody was, you know, everybody is professional. Everybody just, you know, we banged it right out, and uh, this the the production company was good, and we had a good time doing it. And you know, it, they're good stories as well, so that was fun. Hey, you were in. We were talking about it earlier. We touched on this. You were in a lot of video games in the two thousands. So your Fall Phoenix, Jackie Bryant's. So about Captain Falcon, uh, what did you have in mind when you were him and all the other characters in F-Zero GX, if you remember? I saw, saw him as Captain Falcon. You know, he was a good guy. And yeah. he was a good guy and just straight arrow and, you know. And so, you know, but I got to play his brother, who was the bad guy, who is uh, Blood Falcon. So it was the same voice, but I just gave him a little bit of this. Yeah, a little growl. A little growl, a little bit of crazy. At the end. Yeah. Eric likes F Zero story, animation, and characters. He mentioned the rivalry between Captain Falcon and Black Shadow specifically. It, it's too bad because uh, you, you know what? That was the last game they did. F Zero GX was it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. They they have uh, the only the time Captain Falcon ever appears is Super Smash Brothers, and that's uh, the legend himself, Ryo Horikawa, uh, voices him for that. Um, I I don't know. Have you ever heard him as Captain Falcon? No. Oh, okay. That's like the, it's the one everyone knows. It's the come out, show me your moves. <laughs> like this, okay. it's a very over the top voice. On that note, have you heard other actors play the characters you've played in any role, really? Only um, Ren, uh, the person who I forget his name. Um, <clears throat> he did a great job, and uh, he did Ren in the Shenmue Three. Okay. And he's the only one I've I've heard, um, okay. because I was having to listen to him while I'm redoing it in right. my voice. Um, I don't play video games. Right. I I've never been a gamer. I I think I kind of was not the right generation for it either, because I'm 59 this year. Oh my goodness. So <clears throat> I uh, I when I was in high school, Pong came out. <laughs> you know. Yep. And space invaders and 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 asteroids, and then when I was at university, like Pac Man came out, kind of thing. Yeah. So it wasn't really the heyday of, of video games in my youth. And also, I've just never been a competitive person. I've never 
I never like board games or competitive sports or teams or anything like that. I love surfing and sailing and, and scuba diving and, you know, but um, I've never really been a competitive person. So okay. I don't really care if I win or lose. So video games never had that same appeal to me that I think if people want to get to the next level, kind of yeah. I've, I've oh, never gosh, had yeah. that feeling. To an arcade in Japan, I put a hundred yen in um, and chose Paul Phoenix <laughs> and played him. Yeah, and over the sound of dang, 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 you know the arcade sound, um, I can hear like um, like no pain, no gain, or something. <laughs> I'm the strongest in the universe. You know that kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I could hear him, and then right after I heard him, I was like, game over. So I I couldn't even kick or. Anything. But um, I actually heard his voice and I kind of like, hey, that's me. I, I mean, I, that's me. You know? <laughs> and so that was really exciting. Okay. But uh, you said, yeah, we were talking earlier about you work with NHK. Um, how did the Ego de Asobo come about? It looks like it's a pretty old show from what I saw. Been around for a long time. I've been doing voices on and off of that show for about 10 years. I have a lot of little vignettes of like teaching, uh, you know, like like brought to you by the letter G kind of thing. <laughs> and the number four. <laughs> Love Sesame Street. You have those kind of teaching things as well. So I've done other like little character voices. I have the voice of a dinosaur. Okay, that's wonderful. And um, that was like the voice of an apple for a while. Yeah, it's a great show. It's kind of like Sesame Street. It teaches kids English. Ego de Asabo means. Let's play English. English. Show is great. The writers, the director, the staff. It's yeah. different every year. A good friend of mine, Eric Jacobson, was uh, the main guy in it for many years. Now, note Eric Jacobson is not to be confused with American puppeteer Eric Jacobson, who works on Sesame Street. That's just a strange coincidence. Eric Jacobson would play his guitar on Ego de Asobo and sing in the show. And six years ago, the show introduced Orton, a whale character Eric Kelso voices. So many Erics. In any case, Orton swims across the ocean and carries Orton Town on his back. You know, when they, he, when they need uh, some help or something like that, they would say, hey, Orton! He's like, hi! It's a good show. And it's on every morning and every afternoon. No, that's that's. I saw a few clips of it. Yeah, it seems like it's a solid gig, and again, mm. it plays back into teaching English and being voice actor and working for a big corporation like NHK. Eric says he's done about seven or eight programs for NHK, different TV and radio programs, sometimes quick gigs, sometimes co-host opportunities. Um, they sent me as a reporter to the states. <clears throat> really? Yeah, I drove Route sixty six. As a reporter, I uh, I was in New York, I was in Boston, I was in Florida. Oh my gosh! And um, as a reporter, interviewing people for the radio show, and then go back, and then it's in the show, and my the interviews are in there, and we talk about it. And wow, it was really interesting. And you know that was the that was called Radio A Kaiwa, which is just radio conversation, which is still going, huh. and it's the number one educational show in japan that's um, incredible it's a, it's a little higher level english yeah but um i couldn't imagine walking up to someone and sort of like <laughs> hi how are you and you talk like real slow apple <laughs> 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 yeah but uh it's fun you know and it's like it's a lot like bbc but it's also the only channel that you can really get all over japan a lot of other channels are kind of regional but this is the national broadcasting company and they uh you know they do shows for education they do shows for the elderly you know they do shows teaching sign language they they do um every morning their number one show is in the morning radio taiso uh, and I've... you know millions of people watch that every morning and get yeah. their exercise Absolutely, absolutely. The wild. Japanese are good about stuff like that. They're like, yes. well, it's important. You should, you should warm up and exercise in the morning. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. should. And Americans are just I, like, where's my donut? Yeah, exactly. You know? I, I wish we did that here in the states. I really do. I think people would be way less cranky. In Japan, before work in big companies, <clears throat> I don't know how much they do it nowadays. You know, you get 
200 people in your office working there. Everybody must be in front of the office building in the parking lot. <laughs> um, and you space out <clears throat> and you have your leader and you go, hi, ichi, ni, san, shi, ichi, ni, san, shi, you know, in, in unison. And it, uh, it stretches you out, gets the blood pumping a bit, gets some fresh air into your lungs. And then you go, okay, we're done. Everybody's done. All right, let's go in there and go get, as opposed to people just kind of like straggling in, you know, is the boss here? Oh shit. You know, where's my coffee kind of thing. So I'll do some wrap up questions. Um, if you had the chance to voice any character or be on any project, what would you, what would you choose? uh simpsons <laughs> oh the simpsons <laughs> probably the simpsons i'm a huge simpsons fan you know me too <laughs> yeah <laughs> i quote the simpsons like at least once a day and if i'm not quoting the yeah. simpsons at least once a day something's wrong voice actors like that i think is it frank azara uh hank, hank azaria azaria who does like everybody you know looney tune uh, yeah mel blank yeah um people like that um i love bob's burgers just amazing as well yeah, if, if any of the producers on these shows are uh, looking for voice talent. <laughs> so what are you currently doing, like, other than voice work? I'm still teaching a couple days a week, um, doing voice work when it comes up, doing a lot of educational work this week. Um, I got a promotional video for a company. Nothing. Uh, oh, the new, uh, new Ultraman. Yeah, you got to be in the Ultraman thing. <laughs> yeah, that's that was really fun. Yeah, you you got that's like a who's who of Japanese Eng or you know English speakers that live in Japan and do this field. Like you got uh, Jeff Jeff Manning and all that. Yeah, they they took all like the the top people, put them all in one room independently now because of Corona. But we were all in one room. I think we had like fifteen people. We had like a photograph of like on these long <laughs> chairs. With, that's like, amazing. Four or five microphones. Yeah, I remember when I was a little kid. I would come home from elementary school and I think it was channel 44. This was in like San Jose, California. <laughs> and uh, we had Kimba the White Lion. Oh, Kimba. Which was Jungle Titan. Yeah. And then we had Speed Racer and then we had um, Ultraman. Yeah. <laughs> and so I remember as a little kid, of those characters that's incredible but yeah I, I skimmed that cast list for the ultraman project and it's amazing yeah it's amazing again who's who love mm -hmm. to have some of those people on for a for an interview oh you uh, should yeah Contact all of them they, they would they're the same as me you know if they got time they would love to do it so what then i guess that's what's on the horizon is what you just just uh, described um and a lot of things on the horizon i don't know what's over the horizon exactly you know? <laughs> so i usually don't have anything planned you know over two or three weeks ahead of time um what words of wisdom do you have for prospective actors or any anyone else that has done what uh, you're doing or have done it cuts off a bit but eric says about english voice work in japan i would say you can try but don't quit your day job Eric recommends trying something local, like a TV or radio station. He also suggests listening to yourself on a recording as you sound different to yourself than you do to other people. Anything you would like to advertise? Nothing. Ah, my book, Good Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Your book. Amazon, Ericisms. Uh, yes. And that's fun. It's cheap and it's easy. Yeah, I'll probably something pick that, that up. Never, it's something that they'll never expect. <laughs> and, uh, like I said, it's not too deep. It's easy. Everybody seems to get something out of it. I would recommend that. Um, nothing else. Yeah, I saw that, that, that there's a fan run uh, Twitter account. Yeah, and that's just Eric Kelso Voice. Eric Kelso Voice, yeah. And so check that out. And um, and if you have Twitter, let's... You know, yep, let's, I have Twitter. I don't, I don't know really how to do it. I don't follow it much. I'm not really social networker kind of Facebook, but I rarely ever check it, and I very rarely post. Okay. Maybe once a year I'll post something. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, just for the job, it's good to be content. Yeah. And so I, I am. I try. Yeah. Now, you have your email on your website, and that's how we got in touch. <clears throat> my website, anybody can check out my website. It's just erickelso.com. Yeah. And, and some uh, uh, character voices and... So. Um, 
And I think that uh, just about wraps it up. I'll go ahead and link you to my YouTube videos. And um, cool. yeah. yeah, it's been wonderful hey, talking yeah. to you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk to me and answer some, some of my burning questions. Yeah, you too. Anytime. Do it again if you have any more. Awesome. Thank you so much. Since our interview, Eric did record the iconic Captain Falcon lines from Super Smash Brothers. He did a Falcon Punch, Falcon Kick, and Show Me Your Moves. I'll get you yet, Black Shadow. Falcon Punch! Falcon Kick! Show me your moves. Falcon Punch! Falcon Kick! Show me your moves. Show me your moves. Thank you to Eric for doing this interview, even with the uh, technical difficulties. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, please be sure to rate this podcast five stars and subscribe via your favorite podcast app to know when an episode drops. If you want to hear more info about English dubs, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Yui Haruhara. Here's my guest next time on English VoiceOver in Asia. My name is Ward Sexton. I'm a, um, I've been a professional voiceover for 35 years now. If you're an actor that has worked in Asia and would like to be a guest on the podcast, please send an email to yuiharuhara at gmail.com. If you are a listener and would like to know when I have upcoming guests, please follow me on Twitter at yuiharuhara or stay tuned to my YouTube community tab. Until next time, take care.